everyone, it's the Tides Changing here, and welcome to a new Let's Build series in which we'll be building a Mediterranean-themed house. I'm actually really excited to get started on this, and I have a feeling that the result of this series will be even better than that of Let's Build an Apartment. So the first thing that I'm doing here is just making a little hill for the house to go onto, because I don't know why, but I think it looks really pretty when the house sits up a little bit higher than the rest of the lot. And I just feel like it really makes for some more interesting landscaping. And also, as you can probably tell, this house is being built in Monte Vista. And that is because this is an Italian themed world, so I figured what better place to build a Mediterranean themed house. I could have also built it in Starlight Shores, I guess, since that kind of has a Mediterranean theme, but it's not really as authentic, if you know what I mean. Like, it's more modernized, so I just feel like Monte Vista is really the perfect place to build this. So I'm going with more of an Italian kind of Tuscan Mediterranean house. And also, uh, if you guys have been watching the World Adventures Let's Play series that I just started, I am doing that in Monte Vista as well. So I'm kind of making this home for my World Adventure Sims in hopes that, you know, someday they'll get enough money to buy this because I really want to play in this house in my Let's Play series. I just think that'd be really fun to make this in the Let's Build series and then you guys get to see me actually play it in the game. So I'm gearing things in it more towards them. And as you can see here, I'm starting to lay down the foundation of the house. And I should say that I am basing the design of this house on a Mediterranean style floor plan that I found. And I just, I like using floor plans to kind of guide me because I just think it's really fun to find a complex floor plan that does not easily translate into The Sims and doing my best to actually make it work in the game and make something in the game that looks pretty much like what I see in the floor plan. And trying to build a home base off a of floor plan isn't really as easy as, as it seems. Like it takes a good bit of practice to be able to make something that is proportional to what you see in the floor plan and you know to get the more complex floor plans to work in the sim sims you definitely have to make a lot of adjustments and know what you can change but I just think it's really fun to try to recreate floor plans and I don't do that for all of my homes but I do do it for most of the traditional style ones just to make sure things look more authentic you know like if I build a Victorian house I want it to look genuinely like a Victorian house. I will put a link to the floor plan that I'm basing this house off of in the description so you guys can see what I'm going for. And I chose this one because I just think it's a really good size, like it's not too big but not too small. And it will be a three bedroom, three and a half bathroom house. And the really cool thing is that each bedroom is pretty much a master suite. Like it's not like there's one big master suite bedroom and then two other smaller bedrooms. Every one is private, has its own bathroom, and it's really big. So I think it's perfect for, you know, three adult sims living together. So I'm pretty happy to see what this ends up looking like. I have a feeling it's going to turn out pretty well. I did want to briefly talk about the results of that poll video where I asked you guys to comment with what style of home you want me to do for this Let's Build. And Mediterranean won by one vote against Craftsman after those two were pretty close the whole time. Like Craftsman would be winning and then someone would vote for Mediterranean and then it would tie. And it kind of went back and forth between that. Um, so I think there was nine votes for Mediterranean and then eight votes for Craftsman. And if my memory serves me correctly, three for Victorian, two for Beach slash, va slash Vacation, and no one wanted a modern home, which I guess that's just because most of the house building stuff here on YouTube is modern, so you guys wanted to see something a little different. But I'm really happy that Mediterranean won because this is actually the one I wanted to do the most. And then Craftsman was second. And after that, Victorian, and then after that, beach slash vacation, last modern. So the results were pretty much like how my preference of what I wanted to do. So I guess you guys had the same track of thinking as I did. Instead of voting for just one type of house, a few of you actually said, you know, this style or this style or, you know, a mix of this and this. So when any of you did that, what I did was I just put a tick in each of the types. Like if you said, oh, I want... Victorian or Craftsman, I would put one tick in the column for Victorian and one tick in the column for Craftsman because I wasn't sure what else to do with that and that was the most fair way I could think of. And since so many of you also want a Craftsman, like like, like I said, there is eight votes for Craftsman, nine for Mediterranean, 
And then after that, it was three for Victorian. I will make my next house building video of a craftsman house. So you will get a craftsman style house from me. It just won't be any Let's Build series. And you know, that's for all of you who really want to see a craftsman. And plus, like I said, I did also really want to do a craftsman house as well. But getting back to what I'm doing here, as you can see, I just finished up with putting all the walls around on the first floor. And then now I'm making the second floor. And as you can see, I put in a one fourth height level there, which is for the split level stairs, which I will do in a few minutes. And the second floor of this house is pretty small. Like there's not really much of a second floor and that will be one of the bedroom suites. So it's pretty, pri that one is pretty private. And like I said, I think this house is a good size because it's pretty much one floor. And then you have a small second floor, which is a bedroom. And that second building that you saw over there is another bedroom suite. And then on the first floor, there is a third suite. And here I'm just making a basement. I'm trying to get the um the foundation be one wall height level so i can make a walkout basement and the basement also is going to be pretty small and what it's going to be for is a nectar making and storing area for eric and also there will be a small room which i probably won't finish for the downloadable version which will be for you know the three sims in my let's play series to store the artifacts that they get from their travels because you know you need somewhere to put all those statues that you get. You don't want to keep them all in your inventory. You want to have out where people can see them. So that's just what I'm working on here. And I also may put some dojo equipment in there for Roxy as well, so she can practice her martial arts skill. And since I made that basement, well actually, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. Yeah, I want to make the basement a little bit bigger. I feel like it's not quite big enough because you know they might end up with a lot of statues and need a lot of space for that. But now that that is done, I'm actually going to make a split level staircase to go up to the bedroom upstairs. Just because that's kind of what they have in the floor plan and also it just looks really cool. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to lower that floor there by two stair levels or yeah, about a half half halt wall height level. So it's kind of hard to explain how to, how to make the split level stairs, but I made that area down there lower and that's where it will split. So you walk up into that little area and then you go up the stairs into the second floor. And now I'm just putting the floor to where I can go from the second level down to that little turnaround area. So there you can see I have the lower stair in, actually I end up putting it over there, but I have the lower stair in and now I need to put the stair going off of that little landing into the second floor area, which, which you can see there. So that's how you do a split level stair that wasn't it was kind of hard to explain it with it going by so quick but um maybe maybe if i have time i'll make a tutorial of me doing a split level stair in real time if you guys want to see that um but hopefully you can kind of get the gist of how it's done with this and now i'm just putting in some walls trying to make it look a little bit better and it also does cause some goofiness with the floor height levels above it so you have to do some adjustment so you get it to be right. Like I said, it's kind of hard to explain with it going by so quick, but um, maybe eventually I will do a tutorial on how to do it, you know, at a slower pace. And there I'm just putting a stair going down to the basement. Something that I should mention in case you guys don't know it is that the cheat that I'm using to allow me to be able to change the floor height levels is Constrained Floor Elevation False. And you can turn that off by doing, you know, constrained floor elevation true. And that, that just allows you to change the floor height levels however you want. But sometimes you have to be careful about not leaving it on because you can accidentally mess things up by leaving it on and, you know, changing the ground underneath something. But it's a really useful cheat and I use it a lot in my building and, you know, I know a lot of other builders use it as well. I think that and move objects on are the two most important cheats to building. Here I'm just adding some refinements to the stairs and taking care of some issues with wall heights being a little bit glitchy because, like I said, it tends to get messed up a little bit when you alter it. That's why I do the I do split level stairs when I'm making the kind of, I call it the frame of the house, I guess, just like the walls and the basic outline of how it looks just because I don't want to do it when furnishing and accidentally mess up things. So it's just easier to do it with the less you have going already in the house. So the stairs are pretty much, this is pretty much how they're gonna look. I might put in a different style of staircase letter later, but I just wanna put something in as a placeholder. So there you can see what the split level stairs look like. And I think they look pretty nice and they look a lot more interesting than just having a plain, you know, staircase going up. 
And here I'm making a balcony that will stick out of that second floor bedroom. So this house kind of has a courtyard like thing going on when you go to the entrance of the house. And the entrance of the house is right next to that little um, turret, I guess it is. It's kind of a turret, the thing that I'm working on right now. The entrance is to the right of it with how you're looking at it now. So you kind of have to go through a courtyard to get to the entrance and then there's a balcony overlooking that courtyard. I just think that this floor plan is so beautiful and unique and I can't wait to see what the finished product looks like. And now I'm actually going to get started on the roofs of the house. And this is what I was talking about where it's the master suite that's kind of its own separate little building. And then to the left of that is the other master suite and then like I said the other one's a second floor. So like I said all the suites are really private, they all have their own bathroom and sitting room. It's just perfect for three adults. Like this is just the perfect plan for them. And I'm gonna have to try, try really hard to not go crazy and make it too expensive because I want them to actually be able to afford it. But you can actually get a good bit of money from exploring. Like you will see, I think the wealthiest family that I ever had in The Sims 3 was because one of The Sims was an explorer and they just kept coming back with like $50,000 worth of loot. Like they would just make $50,000 a trip. It was ridiculous. Like I just did not know what to know with, know what to do with all of that money. So hopefully that will happen with these guys and they can afford this wonderful house once it's done. So what I'm doing here is I'm working on the garage because since this house was built on a foundation, I have to take out the foundation underneath where the garage will be and I have to make it so the walls are full wall height in the front where the doors will go. Otherwise, you know, you can't put in doors. So you can kind of see what I did there. And pretty much what I did was I just took out the foundation and then I put in walls underneath the walls above where the foundation were and then I lowered them down to the wall height that the foundation was except in the front where I need to put the garage doors in and now I'm just making you know fixing all the little issues that changing the wall height caused on the floor above because um, like I said you have to sometimes have to be careful with the constrained floor elevation sheet because it can mess up things and you may not realize it until later on which has happened to me before but there I, you know, as you can see, I took care of the garage and now I'm working on the roof over here. And um, so I took care of the roof over the garage and now I'm just, I'm making the balcony. And for the roof above there, I'm going to make a one fourth height level and then lower that down, put the roof over that. So I just, so that way I thought that would look a little bit better over the balcony. So as you can see to do the one fourth height level, you just take you use the constrained floor elevation false sheet and you put in three of the staircases to each staircase lowers it down a quarter wall height so you put three staircases in to lower it down to quarter height level and there is the roof over the balcony and now I'm putting in the rest of the roof in this area you know above the little second floor room I may change the style of roof like the color of the roof because I wanted to match whatever the rest of the roofs in Monte Vista look like and I forgot to check that before going in here, so I had to see what the rest of those roofs look like and make the roof of this house, whatever they are, because I do want this to match the rest of the houses in Monte Vista. Like, I want it to look like it's meant for Monte Vista just because they're the more authentic, you know, Italian Tuscan style. The roofing for this house did take me less time to do than it did for the apartment, and I guess that's because I ran to less of the glitchiness that I did with that. Either that, or I just completely ignored it or didn't realize that there was any glitchiness. I don't know, I was kind of tired when I was recording this a few days ago. So I didn't quite finish the roof. Um, I'm probably going to have to fix up a few things in it. Like I actually did want to do a vaulted ceiling above the living room, which is where that roof I just put in there is because I feel like it needs to look grander than it does. But like I said, I was pretty tired when I was doing it, so I just did not feel like doing it. So. That is something that I may work on the second part because I just really want the living room to look grand. And, but it, it will be pretty tricky to try and put in a vaulting, vaulted ceiling, but you know, hopefully, hopefully I can make it work. I'll definitely try. And I'm also not really that sure about how some of the roof looks. The part in that corner right there was where I kind of wasn't sure what to do because it has that diagonal piece. and. It's always kind of frustrating to try and get the roof, you know, a roof where there's a diagonal wall to look right. So, I don't know, I tried putting a diagonal wall there. I was just really tired when I was doing this, so I was just trying to do something. So, what I ended up doing was I decided to make a patio area off of there. In hopes that, you know, I figured it would look better if I could make the roof extend over that so I didn't even have to worry about the diagonal wall. So, yeah, I just kind of made that whole part right there 
a um a patio and you just kind of saw a little bit of how leaving constrained floor elevation falls on can kind of mess up so now i'm just putting some floor over that and trying to figure out how i can put a roof over that to look right and the hip roof like i did here didn't look too bad but i just ended up getting rid of it anyway and i think i kind of just yeah and then i tried that again but I pretty much tried a few things and then just gave up on trying to do that part of the roof, so I will come back to that the second part. So I definitely have to make a few more tweaks to the roof, but the, I mean the other parts I'm pretty happy with what I did. And now I'm just doing, this is the last part of the roof that I did here. And sometimes if you have a staircase right on a wall near where you're putting a roof, you have to get rid of it because for some reason it won't let you put a roof in right next to the modular staircases. So I was just going with a hipped roof right here as you can see and trying to yeah it, it takes I don't know why it takes me a while to do the roofs like I just even if you're not doing like the flat roofs with the constrained floor elevation stuff it still can be tricky to get it to look right with just the regular roofs and now I'm just putting in back in that staircase that I deleted and trying to fix up the little bit of glitching that it caused and that's pretty much all I did in this episode I hope you guys really like this series so far, and if you haven't already, be sure to check out my new Let's Play series. I'm having a lot of fun with it. Well, thanks for watching this, and you know, if you like if you like this, be sure to like it and subscribe if you aren't. Thanks for watching, and bye!